Hey. hey. Let's go. Welcome to the show. <laughs> I don't know why. That'll never get old. Why? It is the cringiest start to the podcast. Shout outs to Asif. Why is that cringy? You it's corny. I- Yes. It's a show, and I'm welcoming them. Okay, welcome to the show. <laughs> it's funny when you say it. Why? <laughs> what is, what's wrong with you? I don't know. I'm All tired. Right. Welcome back. Episode six. We're doing this thing. Yes. Episode um, six, even though... Okay. Even though what? I don't know. I was going to say something. And episode then you were six you... regardless. Yes. Because it's the sixth episode. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, episode six is brought to you by the drinks of the day. Yes. Which is what? I have Death Wish mixed with... Wait, maybe I should have gone first so I could show them yeah. what Death Wish is. Okay, look at this. Oh, why do Liquid. you get to advertise your drinks but I can't mine? Because it's cool and it's unique and I need to actually tell them about it. It's not just like some giant brand apparently. That Shout I've... out to Death okay, Wish. Okay, look at this. Liquid Death... Lick, it's a drink. Oh, I thought it was Death Wish. Why did I say liquid? De- okay. Rewind. Yeah. Liquid Death, not Death Wish. I think Death Wish is an anime. Liquid Death, a drink called Liquid Death. When I, I was at the gas station mm-hmm. and I saw this and I was like, oh, that's a crazy can. Maybe it's that could called- be our first sponsor. Shout out to Liquid Death, okay? Yeah, sponsor so, us. So look, this is um, sparkling water. From the Austrian Alps. So this is like this is Perrier. Uh, like if you, if you want to drink Perrier, but you're listening to Iron Maiden. Okay. This is what you drink. But anyways, I was at, so I was at the gas station, and I saw this. I've never seen this before. I've never heard about it. But I, I was just looking for something kind of like this, because I'm not, uh, I'm not drink like eating or drinking sugar. So oh, yeah. usually I'm always drinking like energy drinks, Monster or Red Bull or something. Or even like, you know, chugging a Gatorade hot summer day. You know, you just want something. But I've not been having any sugar. So I was looking for something like this and I saw this. And it's like uh, it's like heavy metal, um, Austrian heavy metal sparkling water. But it's called Liquid Death. And I'm like, I bought it and I'm like, this looks really cool. And then, like, I'm in the car, and I like, crack it open, and I'm like, yo, like, it's called, I'm, I'm about to drink something that's called liquid death. Yeah, why like, would you? Like, if I drink this and I die, I'm going to feel like the stupidest person ever, because I just drank some, like, they, it says liquid death on it, and I bought it and drank it. But you'll and then be I'm gonna dead. Die. Yeah. So I, like, cracked it open, I, like, smelled it, and I was like, okay, does this smell like death? No, it just smells normal. And it t- <laughs> Wow. Yeah. That's an alive. That's really what happened. That's really what happened, yeah. And then but it just it tastes like Perrier, but um I don't know if it's just psychological that it tastes cooler. But it looks cooler, it looks so I don't cool. know. And it says our proprietary thirst murdering process begins with liquid death forming a rope of veins that will wrap around your thirst head and strangle it once liquid death reaches your thirst's brain all of your thirst's memories will be replaced with repeating loops of its own head imploding (laughs) have you ever read this no that's so metal though which is exactly what happens next by causing your thirst's head to implode and its brain to squirt out of its ears once your thirst has been murdered the soul of your thirst will begin to escape and float towards the ceiling at this point drink a second sip of liquid death to Rip its soul back down and force it to begin gluing its own body parts together so that it can crawl back inside you and eventually grow into a fully formed thirst once again. Ingredients, mountain water and CO2. That that was like a rated R, like a can. (laughs) That was intense. We should have had Layla read it. (laughs) That was intense. This in. It's like if you want to chug sparkling water and punch people in the face. No, it's That's bomb. What this is for. It's a really cool can. Shout outs to them. Yeah, and it's really Dope delicious. marketing. But I mix death, liquid death with cranberry juice in a Starbucks cup. Mine is just straight from the can, like a man. How is it? Delicious. Do you want to try it? You yeah, should actually okay. try it and give your reaction on camera. Because. 
cranberry juice cocktail is super bitter. And then mixing it with liquid death. Boom. It's good. It's good. It tastes like, I don't know. Yeah, what does it it's taste so, like? It's so, it's really sweet. I p- no, it's not. Maybe it's because I haven't been having sugar. I feel it like. It tastes super sweet. It's really bitter to me, which I like. And I feel like, I feel like, what was I going to say? All right, are we done with the uh Can you turn your notifications of off, sir? I can't because my case is messed up and so like the, the That's why you don't get to pick your next case. Something, I can't reach it anymore. I got to take it out of the case now every time I want And to you said it. you didn't need a new phone. Well, Old that game. doesn't mean you need a new phone. That means you need a new case. Um, we bought new phones. And case is much up. cheaper than a phone. So, anyways, we're back. It's number 6. And I have some some grievances uh, to address <laughs> okay. about the last episode. Oh. Because I do not like the narrative that you tried to paint of me and Jesus. the bandwagon that everyone wanted to jump on. Because you wanted to try to, like, talk shit about my sex game. What? I, like I never only have said three that. moves. I you ne- said I only have three moves. Wow, you but are just you like the rest of say, those bitches that are failed, super sensitive. No, what you failed to say, though, is that even though I only have three, I'm very good at those three. I didn't say you have three. You said I have three, but that's when fine. When did I even I'll say I'll own that? it. I have three, but I'm good at them, so that's all that matters. <laughs> what a psycho. <laughs> the fact that you've been harping on that since the last... Asif. What are your three, anyway? Well, you tell me. You're the one who said I only know three of them. I never said that. That's what you said on the last podcast. That's That's not what what I said. said. Which is fine. I'm just saying. I don't remember it. I don't even remember the last podcast, to be honest, when people were outraged at you saying that women have to look good. I don't even remember what you said about all of that. Well, that's very convenient for you, isn't it? (laughs) I was like, really? Was that sad? I don't remember that one part. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it just, like, so you guys think that the way to get a guy is to be really ugly and not try. That's what the theory is? And, so, and then there that were people coming at sense. and my comments saying, um, by the way, if you have a problem with what Asif says, go to Asif's Instagram, please, and thank you so much. Okay? Thank you so much. Yeah. Say something on, on the YouTube video in the comments. Don't get snarky with me because t- you'll get snarky bitch back. Okay. Yeah, if you could, if you have a, something to say to her, then say it to her. If something to do with me, you and can say it on the podcast, come... or you could text me about it. Yeah, why don't you battle Asif since you were so yeah. concerned I'll about what he's you. saying? But for the record, he said he, for the record, you, I'm good you... at those three. Okay, <laughs> just for the record. What a psycho, Asif. <laughs> Nobody was concerned whether you were good or not, or whether it's three or not. I'm pretty sure that didn't even cross anyone's mind but yours. Well, thanks. That makes me feel better. In your mangerie about Asif some <laughs> well, mangerie. It's basically shorts that are so comfy, so thin that you can see everything. It's just like giant. It's just like boxers, basically, but shorts. Like they're not. They're con- what are boxers not cotton? I don't know. But these are these are like basketball, like they're long basketball shorts, but they're super thin. soft. It's super like a, soft. It's like a thin. t-shirt, basically material. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we call it mangerie. Hilarious. So that you can look good for me, so that I don't leave you. Is there like a glare in the camera right there? What there is that? Is, but oh, it's that's okay. on you. It's it you, it's is. you from the window. Look it's at it. Okay. I... It's okay. Okay. So, so, one, well, what else you got? You want to elaborate what you meant by looking good? Because everyone ran with it and basically thought they need to look like hookers with 10 pounds of makeup and lingerie every day. I mean, even the, if they are str- struck, go, go sick, for it. struck and in bed with cancer. <laughs> Do you know that's people are coming at me like, like your husband, even God forbid you like get pregnant or sick or dying in bed with cancer or something and you don't look good that means he's gonna leave and you were yelling at me for that 
Why don't you yell at Asif? He's the one that said he's going to leave me. Yeah, I'm... You didn't really, even mean it like that. Literally, there. This is what... I want to get rid of you hoes. So be gone. No, that's fine. No, if you took it that way, it. If you you're dumb. It, no, if, and goodbye. Because no, this podcast is way. above your intelligence level. That's how I feel. No, if you took it that way, it's probably just because you're ugly or you don't try. And you feel like there's something unfair about that. Yeah, because I but don't get... Me, it, maybe it is unfair, but that doesn't mean it isn't the way it is. I don't know. It's still weird. Like, I mean, is anyone going to seriously argue that physical beauty and physical attractiveness is one of the primary attraction yeah. characteristics they are. for women, like of they women are. for men? Yeah, it because is. they say that, that, yeah. It just is. Just like... No, they say that So that's... you could be negative about that or you could just realize like that's just the way our species evolved yeah, in like this like... People like to be angry their whole life. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like if you actually understand what's going on, then you don't have to be as angry about it. Like that's, that's one of the primary selective characteristics in human species for females is physical attractiveness. And... So you could be like take a really shallow, offended look at that, but it's it works the both ways. There's some criteria that you might feel is unfair to men that women use to choose for determining how acceptable of a mate they might be to continue their genetics into the future. And one of those primary things are like wealth and ability to provide. So you could say, oh, it's just a bunch of gold-digging whores. No, that's not what it is. There's, like, biological reasons where you could think how it would be beneficial for to be with someone who has more of an ability to provide and protect but there's in a dangerous world. But there's something for everyone out there, so don't be mad. <laughs> Even bum bitches get married. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, there's levels to it. And, and just because Asif said your husband's going to leave you doesn't mean he's going to leave you. That's what I don't get is they give you so much power over the, You live in their heads rent free. Hey. <laughs> Shout outs to you. I don't because you, you don't even live in my head rent free. I tax. <laughs> okay. I got to pay rent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fair enough. <clears throat> Moving on. Moving on. So the other day, what were we talking about? And I was like, um, that would be a good subject to talk about on the podcast. We we're talking about, oh, you that you never get lonely? No. How do you not be lonely? I don't understand. I'm really good at entertaining myself. I don't need, I love, I love, like, I like being alone, but I... I also thrive in places where there's lots of people around, so I can do both. I think it's but you're, if you're just chilling by yourself, you mm-hmm. never be like, "I want to go hang out with people." Not really. I don't understand. Because I'd rather be on my phone. Ew. It's the truth. I mean, See? yeah, I'd rather be in like. I mean, what do you mean? I don't get it. Like I don't know. Yeah, to, I'd to rather me... hang out with people, but not just anyone. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I mean, like for me, like you I'm, like don't like you'll hang out with anyone over being alone. That's what no, it says to me. No, that's not true at all. I think it's the that's opposite. That's what you're I'm like. It of, sounds like that's what your your argument is. No, not at all. Because I feel like I'm the type of person that doesn't suffer fools. Like I, if you if I think you're a fucking idiot, I'm not trying to just like hang out and talk to you. Just anyways, an idiot. Just to talk to you. What do you mean? Wait, so what are you saying? I don't get why you don't get what I mean. I don't know. Like, my I favorite always thing, feel if my... like I would rather be in some kind of social setting, hanging out and laughing with friends well, yeah. than just sitting at home on my phone. Well, yeah. When do I turn down social? Well, I'm saying that you just do said I? you would rather be on the phone. No. I would never rather no. just be on the phone at home than hanging out with friends. No, but being on the phone... No, how do I explain this? Being, I wouldn't choose that over that ever. But I also don't feel like, oh, I'm lonely if I 
haven't does that make sense yeah i guess i don't I have feel, that i feel lonely a lot now we know why he acts out on podcasts <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, what do you think it is? The, I don't know. What do you mean you feel lonely a lot? I feel lonely a lot. That's really sad that you feel that way. Like, aside from whatever my standard, like, emotional disposition is, mm-hmm. that's probably what I feel the most, is loneliness. What do you mean? Like, what? normally, I'm good. Like, I have a, like, pretty positive but emotional setting for, for the baseline. But the thing that deviates from that the most that I feel the most is like I don't really feel stress anxiety depression sadness anger like loneliness I would say is the primary one that's really sad what does that mean though I don't know you're really sad what's your primary emotion anger yeah that seems accurate I think that's really sad no I not even anger I would call it I I just feel annoyed <laughs> all the time. Yeah, that's that's better. That's very accurate. Annoyed. Because mm-hmm. I have such high expectations for everything. Every I'm such a perfectionist. You know, perfectionist, high expectation person. That it's like you expect everyone else to live to that standard too. Yeah. So it's really frustrating. And they don't. Because the world doesn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but wait, let's talk about your loneliness. Why do you think that is? That's, it's so interesting. Because, uh, I don't like, know. is Maybe it something just, I'm I, not doing? Um, no, I feel like we're in a much better place in our relationship now. Yeah, you should have felt lonely back in the day when I, I was did. leaving you all the time. No, I did. That, and that's the worst feeling ever. That's what? the worst feeling, like, when you are with someone and you live with someone and you still feel super lonely. Yeah, but you're saying you still feel that way. But it's not... It's not the same? It's not the same, no. But that, you felt... That's, like, why didn't fucking you ever, painful loneliness. Why didn't you like ever... heartbreaking loneliness. <laughs> and now it's just, like, oh, I want to, like... Why didn't you be ever with... be vocal about it, though? You were vocal about it in a different way. I feel like I was. Not like, I'm lonely. You never said that. You said, how did you say I feel say? like I said that in every possible no, way. No, you never said, I feel lonely. Maybe not that exact wording, no. But but did you, were you not, did you not put that together? Not lonely. I never would have said, I, even till this day, I would never think you feel lonely. Oh, yeah. I feel like you're too obsessed with yourself to feel lonely. How dare you? <laughs> No, I don't see I, how anyone can feel lonely when they have when we have the internet. I just don't get it. Yeah, that see that's what's weird about you. you it's like legitimate, uh, like a a fine replacement for you. Yeah, because you like, can turn it off. Online. I get so annoyed with people easily. Yeah, that, and you like, like to be able to just turn it off. Yeah, disengage. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, because it's even, like, you know, like, I... But that's... I'm not saying that's a good thing, either. Like, no, it's probably I mean, a very... There's... I don't what? think it's necessarily good or bad. It's just no, the way that you're it sounds like up. it's bad. Why? Because what does that come from? Like, arrogance? <laughs> what? Needing to tune people out? Or just being annoyed in general all the time? I don't know. You tell me. I don't think it... I think it comes from, like, frustration. I would say it comes from, like, frustration. Frustration of what? Me wanting to control situations. Look out, guys. We're about to do some therapy. (laughs) It might get dangerous. I just started... Frustration about what? I just started therapy, by the way. Congratulations. I really like it. That's good. Awesome. You should have seen the look on my therapist's face when I told heard that my husband <sighs> tells me that I'm crazy and that I need therapy all the time. She what did she like say? so annoyed for me. And I was like, girl, I know. I'm annoyed too. He's annoying. <laughs> that's like, that's like if, if, if I kept telling you, yo, there's something wrong with you. You're sick. You need to go to the doctor and get a checkup. And then you go to the doctor and there's something really wrong with you. And then you both act annoyed, you and your doctor, that I told you to go to the doctor. 
Shouldn't you guys be thanking me? No. I'm providing her with a job, and I'm providing you with the help that you need. <laughs> okay. You're welcome to both No, of you. sir. You're welcome. <laughs> because it's the way that you do it. It's the way you go about it. Oh, so I'm just supposed to say it nicely. Yes. When I'm dealing with your psychoticness. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Noted. <laughs> um, excuse me, we're recording this, so if you could just not. <laughs> Thank you. Anyways, what else are we going to talk about? Um, I have a bunch of yeah. topics. Shout out to you guys for what always you... helping us out with the topic. Okay, so this is BT this is something I wanted to ask you. Mm. I don't maybe I don't know. This might be hard to come up with an answer on the spot. So if you need to think about it, and then we could get back to it. But like we were talking about, like what is the primary defining emotion or most common oh, emotion or whatever? Yeah. So I was thinking, like, what if you like what what. Like, to me, music is one of the most powerful emotional outlets or expressions. Okay. So, is there, like, a a song or an artist that you think best describes your emotionality? No. No? Mm Mm-mm. Why? Because... There's no artist that just sings about, I'm so annoyed. (laughs) I, I would like say really growing like up rock. as a teenager, you get into punk rock, as a teenager, it was like Avril Lavigne, right? Like yeah. her music. That seems like accurate. it was so like I was like, yeah, why is everything have to be so complicated? Right. <laughs> like yes, but as an adult, no. Really, nothing. No, nothing. Hmm. Well, thanks for that. On to the next. <laughs> what about you? Because <laughs> um, you, okay, you love, de- Asif loves depressing music. I do. So I have a theory about that because I like, like, when it comes to music, when it comes movies. to movies, anything, I want the saddest shit possible. What like, just, a freak. just heartbreaking I shit. Of, I that's like what I need. Heartbreaking movies. Like, because I, th- that's way, it's way more like a, it's way stronger of a, like a more visceral emotion. I feel like is sadness. Um, so you, it's much more like you feel it more, and so it feels more real to me. I think in me when it's a very sad song or a very sad movie. But I noticed I have like a I think a generally very positive emotional baseline, mm. and so. The sadness, like, I, I really feel that because that's not my normal setting. You know what I mean? But P, anyone that I've talked to that has, like, more negative, like, baseline setting that, that, that has, like, depression that is generally, like, more sad or something. They're you can like, just no, say my name, Asif, if that makes no, I'm you not feel even, better. I'm not even thinking specifically <laughs> of you. I'm, ta- I'm thinking specifically of other people that I've talked to about oh. this. Um, but you, too, I guess. Um but anyone that has like that more negative setting, when I talk to them, they're like, "No, I don't. I don't want to listen to sad shit. I don't want to watch sad shit." Like, you, you're, you're getting your fill already of that emotion. So you need to feel something different. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's like a there's like an emotional homeostasis. I think that has you have to balance out wherever you're at. You need to balance it out with the opposite emotion. Or maybe, like, whatever emotion you're feeling, you need to feel the opposite in order to really feel anything that's... In order to move the needle from mm. where your baseline is. But I, I like sad stuff. And you don't, right? No, I don't. Too fragile for that. Yeah. So do you like metal? No. I mean, I used to I like a like little screamo. I like you identify with the anger, anger of it. No. No? No, because like, I'm not like angry like they are. It's you're a just different... annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> you need an annoyed uh, genre of music. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've tried to like. Like who's the closest? I've tried. I've tried to listen to some metal stuff and like, I've I've like went to a couple of shows with friends, 
that are like all in metal. Into it. Who? Like the last time that I went with Rick, I I don't. It wasn't really metal. Like I don't know. It's just like modern rock and roll, and but the guys are like screaming and stuff. And I just can't get into it because I th- I think I just don't feel enough anger to relate to it. Like I I'm just not that angry. Like I can't relate. Like, if you have a bunch of pent-up anger and aggression, I totally see getting into that. That's like saying... But I don't feel that. I don't like rap music because I guess just can't relate to that. Because they talk about lifestyle stuff. Right. But the emotional like, quality you could relate to. But I can't relate is, emotionally what to is the em- What's like a, the emotional of quality metal. of... Who? It depends on who. Chris Brown, for example. Uh, fuck bitches, get money. That's... Oh, is that a thing that guys can relate to that I just can't relate to? For sure. At but li- guys don't listen to Chris Brown the way girls do. Maybe so. So... Girls want the guy that fucks bitches and gets money. Is that... That's your theory? For sure. Do you disagree? A little bit. How? I No, I totally disagree. I don't think that's a thing. Like, we don't really want that, do we? Yeah, you do. We subconsciously do? For sure. (sighs) Really? Yeah, it's like, it's what we were just talking about with women's attract, finding men attractive who have a high status or a lot of money or a lot of power. Like, women find that attractive. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Because it usually guarantees a higher level of protection and success for yourself and your offspring, which were for, you know, before, like, stable civilization, mm. where weak, the weaker, more more vulnerable um, situations. You mm. know what I mean? Like, so you needed that. That offered you protection in a way that, it, that n- other people couldn't mm. back in the day where... You couldn't rely on anyone else or any stability or anything. Interesting. When it was all just about power. <laughs> but that stuff is so ingrained in, in us for so long, for so many generations since we were, you know, not even recognizable as people that it's it's part of our evolution and affects our psychology so deeply that even if we don't know it and understand it we have those drives and then they get dismissed as like oh you're being materialistic uh for women or oh you're being yeah modern day uh, like shallow for guys people, like terminologies or whatever like everyone's so sensitive yeah it's gotta stop it's crazy it's gotta stop no i mean it doesn't need to but like go live in your to. own bubble somewhere else <laughs> But, but that's yeah, like the that's majority, the whole... actually. I feel like people that think rationally about like stuff and don't like get so overly worked up, right? You know, just about what someone says online or whatever. You know, yeah. Like, well, that's see, that's, that's the interesting thing. Like, that's the problem with social media. Is like. It gives everyone a voice, but the way that it works is, great. is the people that are yelling the loudest get the most attention. So 2% of the population that is the most extreme, that is the most outraged, they generate the majority of the content and the majority of the articles that you see on social mm. media. And so then we think that that represents a much bigger percentage of the population than it actually does. That's a tiny percentage of the fringes of Mm. the population, but it gets so much coverage that people think it's widespread. And then you think it's actually a really big deal when it's not. It's it's like a few crazy people that we need to dismiss, but they're getting so much coverage. Mm. And so it propagates that. And it makes the other side more extreme and it energizes everything in the other extreme. And so it's it's just a very toxic cycle. Everyone's a mess. Yeah. Hmm. Right? Yeah. I guess. Again, state of annoyance. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Did you have stuff next? Um, Oh, yeah. What? Oh, did you get that from this? Yes. Oh, okay. But do you, if you have something there, go ahead. No. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, we're kind of just, like, I feel like going in and out of, like, different... That's fine. We're chilling. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, do you want to go into your love conquers all thing? Uh, or you still haven't can, figured it out yet? If you want, but it's going to take a lot a of work. What do you mean? Like, I feel like there's just, it's not something I can just right. explain quickly it's like, and easily. That needs to be like your own YouTube video, <laughs> right? Yeah, maybe so. Because it's not so. something I can contribute to, contribute to. I guess. Do you know anyone else that can contribute to your Love Conquers All theory? No, I don't want anyone else to contribute to it. That's the whole <laughs> point of it. It's it's trying to be. It's tr- it's it's a it's attempting to be, a unique, and new thought. Mm. And maybe it's not. Maybe I just haven't learned enough about this, and someone, a thousand years ago, already came up with this exact same shit. Mm-hmm. I don't really know. But I'm trying to not have it be just, like, influenced by someone else's thoughts. Mm. I'm trying to have it manifest organically from myself and whatever, wherever thoughts come from. Mm. Um, but I think that's a, that's, that's a cool, cool subject. I think it's super rare to have unique thoughts. Like, I think it's almost impossible. To, what do you to mean? actually think, to actually know how to think and come up with a thought yourself, it's super, super rare. I don't know if it's rare. I just think it's, I think it's not vocalized. So we think that it's rare. Maybe it's less rare for you because you're a creative type and yeah. creative people and I are, think I think are the ones that have seven. unique thoughts yeah. and that's what makes them so threatening to the established order of the world that they present their unique thoughts to. Hmm. Like, like. That's what happens every time there's like a really great creative genius. They threaten everything that came before them because it's something so new. Like Kanye? Like Kanye, like uh, Michelangelo, like any of these like great art, like Picasso. Anyone who like was smashed to pieces the structure that the previous people in that field had built See, would you because say of their genius. Jeff Bezos is creative? Uh, I, think I don't di- know. I, don't, I wouldn't call him creative. I don't creative. know, really. Maybe he's just a... I, I really don't know enough about him, I guess. You Maybe need to. he's just like a organizational genius. Yeah. Yes. But that is some type of no. genius. Like, he For thought sure. of this... Like, he created this whole system mm-hmm. that didn't never existed before. Yo, I'm some- so fascinated by the way Amazon works. Right. There's so many levels to it. It's so complex. There's so many things that rely no- on other things to happen at perfect timing in order for this to happen. And Y'all that's have no idea. Like the technology that they need to possess to pull off what they pull off. What's going on with the drones? I thought we were supposed to have drones delivered. I just ship, saw but... someone talk about how they just got like approval from the FAA for some, for drone something. That would be cool. It was all on Twitter. You need to be on Twitter more. I'm never on Twitter. Twitter's dope. I don't, un- I don't Twitter's know. like the mess that is Facebook, Instagram, but funny. But you can still like joke because there's so many people with anonymous accounts mm. that it You can just say crazy shit. Crazy shit. And it, most people are like just truly being themselves, I feel like, on Twitter. Mm. Whereas like you can only you fake it so some, much yeah. on, you know, like public profile, like your profile is Facebook, right? Your profile is Instagram. But like Twitter, you can be like, it's like close. It's like to... It's like Reddit, kind of. You know how Reddit's like thriving and alive and like... Is it? I feel like it's like a whole nother world of social media because it's like yeah, it's everybody can be themselves. Yeah, it's from everything else. Like it's its own thing. Very and they're separate. not afraid to speak their mind because who's going to cancel you? Right. You're just some anonymous like... XXX at like... Ghetto Blaster what? 89. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spaceship 12. Yeah. Like... Yeah. That's my theory. So Twitter's dope. I guess I got to get more into it. Like, because I only follow like five people. Yeah. I don't know how my feed got so... You have to like like things that you're like... Inter- like you have to interact. Yeah. I but at the don't. same time, like you can't be like... Like you need an anonymous Twitter. <laughs> so I don't get canceled. Because you're reflective of me at the end of the day, which is really annoying. Can we not? Like, we're separate. 
two different people who think very differently. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It does to no, me. They'll come to for me, your it head does. Too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why <laughs> you trying to wild out on social media. You can be anonymous, sir. Okay, well maybe that's what I'll do. I feel like I just don't like. I feel like I don't have time to like. You try and make time on Twitter. Facebook. Not lately, really. Really? Good for you. I don't have time to write essays to people who are too stupid to respond properly. Like I'm saying, have it, I, was, I was waiting for you to give up. I gave up. It's just, God bless. It's just about laughing at shit now. It's just about <laughs> memes and Yeah, funny shit. that's why Twitter is so funny. Yeah. Honestly, I think you'd love it. All right, well. And that goes for anyone of you guys that don't have a Twitter account. Get on Twitter. That's how much is fun. Twitter paying you right now? Nothing. Not enough. <sighs> so, anyways, what what I was trying to say... Oh, yeah, what were you saying? I'm sorry. Was that I think actually thinking is super rare. Oh, yeah. Because it's not. Oh. if you talk to someone, talk to someone about any subject, mm-hmm. and depending on, like, where they are politically, where they get their news from, what, like, that type of background stuff... You can pretty much tell exactly what they're going to say about whatever subject. Like, I don't even need to have a conversation Based with you. on what again, you said? Based on where they get their news from, what where they identify politically, where they identify, like, if they're, so like, s- what uh, group of, like, religion they're in or whatever. You don't even, it's like not even having a conversation with a, a real person. It's like have it's... Because they're so heavily influenced by all these... Um... Because any of the things that they think, they're not actually thinking. They're, most people just repeat shit that they heard from someone else Mm -hmm. it's like that like you always get mad at me for doing that when you like when we're having a conversation i'm like okay but why do you think that where did that thought come from because people identify with their thoughts and their beliefs Mm -hmm. but they're that's not you're not your thoughts and your beliefs you're though that's something separate from you because most of your thoughts and most of your beliefs you didn't come up with Mm. you heard that somewhere and then you're like oh yeah okay like i'll say that what's wrong with that with that yeah that's not the same thing as actually thinking. That's regurgitating some information from somewhere else. That's not the same thing. Actually thinking is a, is a very mysterious process in which your consciousness interacts with something that we do not understand that is the force of creativity. Hmm. And my... My uh, conception of that is whatever that force of creative creativity based in um, some level of consciousness and truth and love, that's what God is. And when you partake in the creative process, when you create something new, you partake in that same process of creation that God created the earth, that we're continually creating a new reality and that's why we connect with creativity that's how artists cr- connect us to the divine that's how artists cr- connect us to something deeper than what we just see in everyday life because there's something very deep there and i don't think anyone understands it mm. but that's also connected to why love conquers all <laughs> okay but the point is that if you're not doing that, you're not really thinking. You're um, appropriating unearned thoughts and passing them off as your own. Like most people that think uh, have certain beliefs or thoughts about a subject have never actually even thought about that, uh, the subject. They just ha- have these things that they've heard before and they say that. Mm. And they identify with that somehow. But like Carl Jung said, who was... Uh, an amazing psychologist who was Freud's student and kind of ended up breaking off with him because of a more spiritual viewpoint, I guess you could say. Um, But he said, people don't have ideas. Ideas have people. Mm. And I think that is so apparent in the world today with the political division and chaos and stuff that we have going on right now with all of the identity politics Mm. and how divided everyone is. Like, these people are possessed by an idea or an ideology. And that idea has them. It has them in its its clutches and it controls them. They don't 
control it. Mm. It's the other way around. Mm. But however that is supposed to work out ultimately in the end of everything is why I think love conquers all. Mm. And why I think... I could see that, though. Because if people... Like, people are going to get... I feel like... I really feel like people are going to get sick of, like, just fighting each other all the time. Mm-hmm. That's what it's, I think it's, just, it's a really amazing, see, that's, that's another thing. Like people take ideas for granted, like just as assumptions they're like, oh yeah, well, of course all humans are equal. Mm-hmm. Like that's a thought that someone came up with that before that one person thought of, no one believed that for, for all of history, no one believed that. Mm-hmm. Until one person had to think of it and say it out loud, and then everyone else tried to destroy that person for saying it because it it it, it was that genius idea that demolishes what came before it, mm-hmm. and it's a threat to everything that we established. What do you mean all humans are equal? We've our whole for everything that we've ever known, we've no one has ever thought of that. It's a crazy, ridiculous, stupid thing to say. But according someone said, sa- according to everyone who like, if you look at it. Like, because that's what I'm saying. We're just taking that for granted. Of course, human beings are equal. But if you look at it, there's no way you can look at anyone in any measure and say people are equal. What do you mean? How are they equal? We're, we're unequal in every single way. In the amount of money that we have, mm-hmm. in our attractiveness, in our physical abilities, in our mental abilities, in every way you could possibly imagine, we're unequal. So where does that idea of we're all equal come from? That's a crazy revolutionary thought that transformed the world forever when it broke out. But that's a crazy, unique idea of some type of religious, spiritual uh, origin. That idea. That idea, like, love conquers all. That idea of, like, love your enemies. Mm-hmm. Like, how, what an insane idea is that? Love your enemies? The people that hate you and want to do you the most evil. Mm. You shouldn't fight hate with hate. You shouldn't right. fight evil with evil. You should fight evil with what's better than it, with, with love. Mm-hmm. That's a crazy concept to think of. But there's something uh, uh, mysteriously effective about it. Mm-hmm. Like, ultimately, that creates the right results even though it's so counterintuitive yeah i get like the way like how people say like what would the prophet do Mm -hmm. like i always think of that like before i'm gonna cuss someone out (laughs) Mm. like he would totally not right but that's so in i've never thought like why he would totally not you know right it's a crazy thing to think about because it, but it like doesn't you said, really it's make effective sense. Or whatever. Yeah, it's a crazy like idea. Hmm, interesting. There's wisdom behind it. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's the same thing with like the human equality thing. Is like, in every way you want to measure people, they're they're going to be unequal. Hmm. So how do you come up with the idea that human beings are equal? How could you ever justify that? Well, and I can see why. We will always be fighting that, you know. Why? That could be all. Well, because if 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 that theory is correct, like, like not everyone's equal, like you said, because not everyone's equally smart or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever you, your excuses were, what you said to back that up. Right. And everyone's always striving for that. I feel like, for especially equality? here. For equality. Yeah. It's the same thing as, like, the participation award. Well, it's like what... Right? No, I think because I think ultimate... That's the crazy, mysterious thing about that spiritual and religious origin of these thoughts is that even though every way that you make a case for it, we are unequal, and yet we are equal. Why? How? Where does that equality come from? The love there's no conquers measure- all part. <laughs> there's no measurable way where it makes sense that everyone is of equal value. What if I can contribute so much to the world that I can save thousands of lives? There are people that have done it. There are people that have positively impacted and saved thousands of lives. And there are people who have done nothing but take their whole life, just sat around and took. 
And there are people that have done worse than that. They've killed people. They've done negative things. Mm -hmm. But at some level, how could you say that these people are equal? Mm. It goes back to, we talked about this in an earlier podcast on a slightly different subject. But to me, I don't see any argument you can make for the equality of people besides the fact that there's something sacred and uh, holy about each one of us because God made us. And because God made us in his mm. image. And we have that spark of the divine in us. With us. We have the breath of the divine that gave our soul to our body. Like there's something uh, sacred about that. Hmm. But without that, I don't... I have never seen an argument that makes sense of how you could get to equality. Or why there should be equality. Why equality would even be a good thing. Why? Because without without that idea of the divine imparting us all with some sacredness of our soul, it, it, otherwise, without that, it's unjust for no, equality because to in, exist. What? No, because I thought, remember when we were talking about Canyon City and how everyone gets along because most of them, like, probably all think the same uh-huh. and agree with, like, the same things? Yeah. I know it's just, like, this happy-go-lucky, like, little town. Okay. Like... You're saying it shouldn't be like that? Basically, that's like, that. to me, that's like what you're saying. How are you relating that to what I was saying? Because you said equality shouldn't be, a th- it's not necessarily a good thing. But how's that not a, how is like, what was the word you used? I forgot when you were describing like Canyon City. Oh, that, well, that was not, that's not equality. That's just, I know, uh, but that, uh, that, like a shared identity. That's like, why, yeah, why, why? But you could be unequal in that. Not everyone in King and City has, makes the same amount of money. Right. So there's inequality there. Mm. There's inequality with how attractive the population is. <laughs> is there? Yeah. Even if you share a, a, an, an identity, a, a group identity with people, there's still inequality. And if you don't have that to fall back with, like, uh, that divine, I just don't see why. divinely instantiated uh, sacredness to human life and the human soul and the human spirit. If you don't have that, then it's. I don't see how you can claim that there is such a thing as equality, or there should be such a thing as equality, or that it would be a good thing. I would think it would be a bad thing and why? A, an unjust thing. Why? Because if I was able to do more with my life and I got more money and Mm -hmm. I look better Mm -hmm. and I'm smarter and I'm faster than you, Mm -hmm. shouldn't I deserve more than you? No. Why? Not necessarily. Why not? Because you already have all those other advantages. So that means that that those advantages worked to, to my advantage and I should have an advantage to everything in life. I guess it... If I'm better at everything, shouldn't I have... Better stuff than someone who's not better? Not necessarily. The only way it's not necessarily is because we're all still ultimately have the same value as human beings. Because of our soul and because of God. Right, right, right? I think, I mean, I don't, I've never heard anything compelling that could answer What do you mean? Wait, no, what did you say? You backed it up with because you should Wait. I'm saying if we didn't, if, if all we had, if we didn't have God and the sacredness of the human spirit, yes, all we had was the materialistic scientific process to explain life and the world with. When you're in the wild, in the jungle, mm-hmm. the strongest lion gets the food. Yeah. We don't say the strongest lion doesn't give up some of his foods so the other ones can live. No, you have to out-compete if you want to survive. And the ones that are at the top earned their spot at the top and get the spoils. And the other ones have to starve to death. Oh, and what are you... So oh. isn't it... If with, without God, isn't it the same thing with people? Like, if, I, if I'm the top lion, I deserve the top of everything, and you can have my leftovers. Mm, I don't know. Deserve or get is well two different things. Fair enough. So get, then. Yeah, you get it. Yeah. And that's why everyone's angry, because you get it. But it doesn't mean you deserve it. But that seems fair. It it's it is doesn't, the is the though. strongest alpha lion, doesn't he deserve 
his pick of the females and doesn't he deserve his like, hunting kill or like the uh, the the sucky lion the b team lion like deserves some of his stuff i think the whole argument is everyone deserves a shot at that and it's not given to everyone in the real world not everyone is given a fair shot at it and you're right. trying to say but there's no that that's demand. okay there's no um, right. There's no reason to that you should expect fairness. It's unfair to the to the beta lion too. His life sucks. He can't outcompete the other male for anything, and he'll probably starve to death and won't be able to spread his genes into the future. That sucks for him. That's unfair for him. It is what it is. That's life. Hmm. But I think it's easier to accept that mentality. Like for me, like I I can't imagine I can't imagine not being Muslim and like accepting that mentality. Does that make sense? Accept like what? I feel like Islam having that Islam as a my background helps me accept that the unfairness. The unfairness because like at the end of the day, I believe, like, Allah will be just in the end. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There will always be justice. Right. Like, I almost, like, I feel like it's easier for Muslims For sure. That you feel like people are not ultimately going to get away with shit. Yeah. You feel like the people that really do deserve better will get better. Yep. So and it, it's just a short period of yeah. time that you're just... Right. Yeah, I think most religions subscribe to that same thing. Do they, though? Yeah, and I think every religion provides that emotional and psychological need to people. Do they, though? I I guess I don't. I don't, again, I don't know enough about other religions. To just help you deal with life. Mm. You know? Yeah, that's why I can't. It's so. I feel. It's. It would be hard to navigate through this life without religion, in my opinion. I agree. For sure. Mm. really hard yeah that's why like uh nietzsche said you know the his famous quote is god is dead and people always like quote that as like some kind of triumphant thing of like science overcoming this stupid backward superstition of religion and all that but that's not what his quote really was Mm -hmm. that's not the full quote and that's not what he meant he said god is dead and we have killed him and there's not enough mm. blood in all the oceans to wash the... There's not enough water in all the oceans to wash the blood from our hands. Mm. So what like he what he was saying... Taking religion out of things. Yeah, what he was saying... Like, this was, you know, he wrote... He was writing, like, 200 years ago, you know? So he was seeing the very beginning of Christianity starting to fade from the primary role in culture Mm. like before that everyone was just religious that was just what everyone went to church on sunday everyone like had those same beliefs everyone that's just what everyone did and at that point that was starting to fade for the first time and secularism and the dismissal of the church as the you know center point Mm. for people's lives and communities was starting to fade Mm. and that same thing happened in the muslim world too so people don't people want to try to like dismiss it maybe as some uniquely European thing, but the same thing happened in the Islamic world. Hmm. Um, but his his idea was that if we had this center thing to build our lives around, to build our beliefs around, to uh, build our cultural practices around that gave us all purpose and meaning and some kind of uh, psychological and emotional stability. What happens if you yank that out? What happens if we get rid of that? And you just have, what, just science and materialism and that's it. Like, that doesn't give you any purpose. That doesn't give you any meaning. And it doesn't offer that same psychological and emotional stability. So does your spirit... Or values feel more aligned with a different era in time. And I feel like you, sir. Do you feel that way? Absolutely not. I think I used to only because I was naive and I didn't know any better. What do you mean? I, what? I feel like you're so old-fashioned. 
Yeah, maybe so, but I think... Well, that means this is not your era. <laughs> I don't think so. I think that means whatever was in the past that had some type of truth and utility to it that is being forgotten today, if I feel that way, it's my it's my purpose to bring that into the world today. Oh, <laughs> okay. I think it's like... But I don't, like to me. Uh, I always felt very romantic about the past. Like, I thought it would be like so cool to live a thousand years ago, mm-hmm. or like cowboy times, or like any of those like m- times that feel more adventurous and romanticized and cool and like exciting. Never have um, I ever. But I think. I think that comes just from, like, that romantic view that we have of those times from the stories that we tell of them now. I don't think anyone really would trade their life now for a life a thousand years ago or five thousand years ago or whenever it is. Mm -hmm. I think the amount of suffering Mm -hmm. is so much less now Mm -hmm. for the vast majority of people that it doesn't make sense to want to make that trade. It makes sense to think what what it was about those times that you can that you could bring into reality now and that's why you're born now because that's what you're supposed to do whatever it is that attracts you to that is pulling you towards some type of interest or purpose that is supposed to be coming into the world now Hmm. so that's why you're here now otherwise you would have been back then Hmm. she has some good ones this Hanita, shout out to Hanita. She always has good stuff whenever we're on live too. Yeah. Um. Uh, let's see. Whether let's see how to deal with growing a different, growing at a different pace than your partner. Hmm. How do you feel about that? I don't know. I'm indifferent. Yeah, well, we have a podcast here, so you got to, like, have something to say. I don't know. I don't know. I... Yeah, because you're always, like, evolving, I feel like. And I'm just, like... That's... "Eh." I think that's the (laughs) purpose of life is transformation. Oh, yeah. Well, that goes into that topic. What is the purpose of life? The purpose of life is a process of transformation, even painful, almost deathly transformation in order to forge yourself into who you're supposed to be he's getting that from drinking this by the way (laughs) what what's the link (laughs) because painful you said almost deathly or what did you say it could it could kill you the process so dark the process could kill you to kill you to what? Because you need to transform? Yeah, you have to transform into who you're supposed to be, into what you're supposed to be, into your potential self that you've been not living up to your entire life. The same way that when you look back on your past and you could look back on it with regret and with like uh, um, so you... self-pity or something, uh-huh. you got to know that like people look back and say like if i only knew what i know now yeah then like you couldn't have you couldn't have known that now Mm -hmm. because the only way you know that now is because of what happened then Mm -hmm. you had to go through that to get here to be who you are now so you're saying there's gonna be lots of regret no i'm saying if you look at it properly there's zero regret Regret. right 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 because Because... you had to go through that to know better now to know what you know now and to be who you are now Everything that happened to you up to this point had to happen. And to be who you're supposed to be, who even now you're so severely falling short of. And any one of us could think about, like, like just think about that. Like, which ways am I fucking up that I know that I'm fucking up, that I could stop fucking up? Like, it doesn't take much thought and imagination to think of a couple things that you know you're doing stupid in your life. Do you feel like it's life. harder for people now to, like, self-reflect like that in general or easier? I think it's way easier. Why? Because I think there's much less percentage of the population that are are not worried about just surviving. 
Mm. It's a it's a spiritual and intellectual pursuit that a lot of people never had the chance to because they were too busy mm. trying not to die all day. And uh, they were okay, they were too busy not. just <laughs> dealing with the the horrible circumstances of their life that they couldn't ever do that. Like there's so many people that never got to live to the age of 30. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it's not till that age, I think. Okay, what Until about... Until you've lived enough and you have enough of life experience, you start accumulating enough understanding and wisdom that you can really start to understand these questions. But I and also think that it was easier to self-reflect. I don't know. Without maybe. all those distract, Like, they... Like, technology is such that's a distraction. True. For sure, that's true. So... Yeah, you didn't have... I mean... Uh, let's you, not a lot of people had a lot of back. extra time. Well, I think yeah, I think you're right. A lot of people had a lot of extra time to just sit around, mm-hmm. sit around a campfire, and talk. Or, yeah, talk. Or like not deep. have anyone to talk to. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you're just out there with nature or some shit. Mm-hmm. Like whatever it is. Like, uh, that is a very thing. A uh, very big thing about the modern world is. We have figured out how to fill up every fucking second of yeah. our waking life. And I feel like I started like reflecting from a very young age because I didn't have devices. Yeah. And I being feel in like Morocco be, and shit, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. That played a huge role. Yeah. I remember like from a young age always thinking. Yeah. About. See, that's. See, this is why maybe technology might be evil. Mm-hmm. Because like if we could figure out how to like occupy, literally like occupy every second that you're awake, yeah, you never have to think. Yeah, you, we could fill your time and your attention with and your consciousness with inputs or... from outside of you, yeah. your entire conscious life. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was talking about with the genius thing. It can't come from outside of you. Mm-hmm. That connection comes from inside you, from inside yourself. Whatever yourself connects with. That is the connection of the divine. That is what spirituality is all. It comes only from within you. So, if you're plugged into everything external to you the entire time, you'll never even hear that voice. So you'll I've, never even feel that input. So it's harder to do that now. Maybe. I don't know. That's I a complicated think, question. No, I think I feel it like is. Maybe it's harder to do, I, but I think maybe more people have the opportunity to do it. have the opportunity, yeah. but not the... That's what it not is. Not the... What is it? Not the, the, like, uh... What do you call that? Yeah. Yeah. You guys get it. Yeah. (laughs) Let's go with that. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) That's really interesting. That's a good question, yeah. What was the question? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to figure out. Oh, because it started about with how to deal with your... With growing at a different pace than your partner. Uh, you never answered that, yeah. really. Yeah, so... Yeah, what is that? I feel like it's more prevalent for you. I mean, I feel like it's more, like, prevalent for you than it is me, even though, like, it's just different for me, you know? Well, for me, like I said, because I think You're that it's a- that process of transformation. Yeah. Um. In order for things to change, and in order for things to transform, you have to be willing to sacrifice what they were before. So to be who you can, your potential self, to be who you're supposed to be, you have to sacrifice who you are now. You have to be willing to burn off all that dead wood and burn yourself down so severely that there might be nothing left and then whatever is left you rise like a a phoenix from the ashes to be who you're supposed to i didn't ask but you have to be willing to do that you have to be willing to transform and a lot of people don't want to change and don't want to transform because they're scared of losing that they're scared of burning off all that dead wood that they've been identifying as themselves but if you're willing to transform, if you're willing to change, if you're willing to take on new information and be open-minded about new viewpoints and then adapt and change yourself to what you feel is the truth, if you value that truth over your identity, you, you have to sacrifice your identity to that truth. What a- the, uh, the refusal to do that is what, is what kofar is, right? You know that that's the truth and you still refuse it and reject it. But you have to know, you understand and know that that is the truth and I still choose to not do it. And a lot of people do that with lots of things in their mm-hmm. lives. But the, because the ability to, if you accept that that is the truth, 
like, man, what am I going to have to change if I accept that as the truth? I've built my entire life and my entire identity on something else, and now I realize that's all bullshit. And, the, and I realize something else is the truth, and that truth will demolish everything that I've built. I'm not willing to make that sacrifice, so I'll just live a lie. But when How you make is that, that answering the question, sir? Because when you make that choice to value the truth over your identity and you sacrifice your identity to that truth, you transform and you change. And you can only do that when you are ready to do that, when your consciousness and your life experience and your ideas and thinking and your wisdom have connected properly and you're primed for it. And you that happens at your own timetable. And because I hit that point, okay, then now the, all of a go. sudden, I expect everyone else to be at that same point too. Like it didn't, m- my transformation, my realization of these things, they didn't happen on someone else's time scale. There were people that got there before me. And if they told me 10 years ago when I wasn't ready for it, I would have been like, what are you talking to me about? I don't even understand what you're saying. Why are you saying that? I, I'm, not, I'm not with that. You can, you, you, you can only get there when you're ready mm-hmm. so the same way that you you can't hold yourself to someone else's time schedule that was ahead of you now as soon as you get there and you wake up and you open your eyes you look around and you get mad at everyone else like why aren't you guys awake mm. like you ju- you just woke up there were people that were up way before you but now you're up and you want everyone around you to be up also because you just woke up everyone got to be at their own pace at Mm -hmm. their own time schedule because it's not something that can be done by force it has to happen Mm -hmm. for real and to each person organically (laughs) why are you laughing at me because that was the longest answer to that question and you went off on a tangent, low key, and then you came back and you actually answered it. And I it, tied it and all you could, together. <laughs> but you could have, like, for people like me that have like ADD, would have been like, what? wait, what? Well, take but, some like, medication. You, and you didn't call answer me back. the question. <laughs> take some medication and call me back. Like I said, we're growing at two different levels. <laughs> yeah. But this goes back to the, the reason why there cannot be force with anything. Yeah. You cannot have that authoritarian mentality to force anyone to do anything. I can force Layla to eat. I will. Yes. It's <laughs> different for children. But for full-grown adults, What's you can't considered force a anyone adult? to, be, a teen to is, do anything. I think you can't force a teen either. Yeah, I agree. So don't say full-grown adult because a teenager is not a full-grown adult, sir. Okay, but people are willing to do it with full-grown adults, so they're definitely yeah. going to be willing to do it with teenagers. Yeah, true. Um, but my point is you can't compel someone to attain some enlightenment or... Of course not. Moral right? transformation or spiritual transformation or anything. What? Is that what everyone thinks that they're going to do? I th- it, that's what it feels like. It yeah. feels like everyone thinks they're right and they're going to force everyone to do what they think is right because they're right. Mm-hmm. That's what it feels... That's what the environment feels like right now mm-hmm. to me. Mm. What was her other one? Tolerating unhealthy relationships to avoid being lonely. Sir Ossif, take it away. <laughs> well. Am I lonely? I don't feel like I tolerate toxic relationships to avoid feeling lonely. You don't tolerate me? <laughs> you don't feel like you tolerate me? You would have thought hmm, that, like. That's a good question. Three years ago, you'd been like, you're just so, like, I don't know. I feel like you thought I was. I don't necessarily, so here's the thing. Everyone says toxic, toxicity, whatever. I don't know if I always think that that's a bad thing. Toxicness? Or that we always have to like, or that we always have to like run away from that, if that makes sense. And I'm only speaking because I know I have extremely toxic tendencies. <laughs> and you don't want everyone to run away from you? Well, not, no, but I mean like, no, it's not even like that. It's, it's just like, so what? You're just going to live this perfect little lifestyle and and get rid of everyone? You know what I mean? Because I feel like everyone 
not everyone, but a lot of people have toxic traits. Well, yeah, no one's perfect. Everyone's yeah. fucked up. So that's a good point. Yeah, if you do, you think you can just cut everyone out, and you can, but then to- so tolerating unhealthy relationships to avoid being lonely. You tolerate me a lot of the time, or you used to make me feel if like you, say you did. Tolerate, uh, what say it again? Tolerate toxic Tolerating relationships to avoid unhealthy. being lonely. I do not think of you, our relationship is at toxic? all. When you bring that subject up, like I'm not thinking about our relationship. You don't anymore. About, like, Shocking. I'm thinking about like friendships or something um, that like someone that I maybe don't know. has a bad effect on you. I feel like it's okay to cut friends off. People like that. But why is that okay and it's not... You know what I mean? Right. Like, there's so many... Well, yeah. There are some people worth fighting for and putting up with that shit for, and then there are others that it's just... It's not worth it. Yeah. I think that 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 idea that, like, cutting off toxic people to avoid feeling lonely, like, you can use that to justify um, walking away from a relationship for any reason, basically. Any time that you guys fight, anything that you don't like about the other person, any, like, ongoing thing that you guys don't get along with, you could use that and justify it and then, like, feel righteous in your mm. um, in your surrender to the situation. Like, you're not... That's the whole like, importance of marriage. Made, like, when you get married, you're shackled to this other fucking lunatic. That was harsh. It's, a, it's an <laughs> insane thing to do. It's an insane thing to do. Shackle. To shackle you yourself. You are not to shackled, like sir. What do you mean? You are not shackled. For sure we are. No, you're We're not. We're both shackled to each other. Get, get a divorce and unshackle. That's not that's not so easy, and that's the whole point yeah, it of is. it. That's the whole point of it. If we weren't married, there would be no shackle. I could just like be like, yo, I've had enough. I'm just gonna not you come back. You could still do that. No, it's much more complicated once you've once you got married to unshackle yourself. I don't know. And it's supposed to be harder because it's supposed to be, it's not supposed to be easy. It can't be easy. That marriage is, that's why everyone says uh, marriage is work. Is that what they say? Mm-hmm. Relationship is work. Like you can't understand what that means until you're there. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, I get Because yeah. what it really is, is there's another person that has a completely different life uh, experience than you. Mm-hmm. And then you guys are supposed to go through the rest of your life seeing eye to eye and agreeing on every major decision for the I rest of your life. I would have never gotten married that's if it was ever happen. presented to me like that. But that's what it is. <laughs> that's why you don't get married when you're old. <laughs> yeah, that's why you have to get married when that you're young and stupid enough to think that it's a good idea. Because that alone Because that's a horrible idea. Gives me so much anxiety to right. think about, like... What? Yeah, it's what a, a crazy concept. idea. But you need that in order to, uh, you know, kind of beat yourself into what you're supposed to be. Because if I was just on my own and I had the ability to walk away from anyone who didn't see eye to eye with me, from anyone who gave me anything that I might say is toxic or negative or whatever, I'm never going to be in that position where I could do to myself and force myself to do what I need to do. I've, you have to have someone else there with you that's going to beat you in the head every single day in order to get you into that the right shape. Are you condoning domestic violence, sir? No, I'm talking about being forged into <laughs> just, some kind of... I'm just being one of those internet trolls. Like, He's condoning domestic violence! So... It's that same process of transformation that we're talking about with life. Like, if you don't have someone to force you to transform like that, it's painful. That process is painful. And we're going to let ourselves get away with it and get out of it unless someone forces us most of the time. And that's one of the main functions of marriage, I think. Is to force yourself to... Because you can't just run away from the struggle, and the struggle is going to mm. forge you into who you're supposed to be. If yeah, you if you resist if that. you mm. resist the struggle turning you into a bitter, resentful person, then it will forge you into who you're supposed to I be. So that's your goal: is to endure that suffering and let it make you into a into your potential self instead of a bitter, resentful version of yourself. I feel like it's getting harder and harder. That's what she said. To 
I'm going to kill you. <laughs> what is? To, like, stay married. Because of these new terms, like, toxic relationships. Mm. Toxic, you're toxic. Right. Everyone's got toxicity. Not everyone, but, like, a lot of people do. For sure. And, and society is making us feel like, like, this ties back into our last podcast, how um happiness is the goal in life right right so the second you feel unhappy that's like society's teaching us that's like the you know the red flag right that's the indicator that you like, gotta do get something. out yeah so it's 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 harder and harder yeah for my Maybe our so. generation for i sure. feel like and i totally get it like, I feel like if we would have just gotten married a li- just like, like almost three, four years later, we probably wouldn't have lasted the way we did mm. necessarily, right? Because this, ta- this, this, this new wave, I feel like, of that mentality is only since like social media was booming. Yeah, that's true. Right. I don't That's know. my theory. Because at the end of the day, I still think love conquers all. <laughs> and maybe it's just naive of me to think that I'm, I'm somehow You're such uniquely, a little hopeless romantic. Uniquely involved in that somehow. But I really feel like that's... It's something... <laughs> It's something that, like, what the force of whatever love is, is something that is more powerful than anything. And you have to surrender to it. You can't fight it. You can't resist it. You can't, I mean, you can, but it's not, it's not going to yield the best results. Mm -hmm. Like, you could say, no, I'm going to keep my self-sufficiency. I'm going to keep my dignity. I'm going to keep my self-respect. Hmm. But it's not worth any of that. It's worth more than anything. Hmm. You should trade everything for it. For and love? Yes. It's priceless. It's the, it's the most valuable thing. And it's worth any price. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Glad you think so. Because I think that's the only way you're still with me. Facts. Big facts. Your mom's a hoe, Asif. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, you're a hoe. That's rude. <laughs> I'm talking about... Look we at, have to edit look that at, one look out. Look at how toxic this is. <laughs> I'm talking about how much I love you, that it's worth no, any price, and your response just... is you're a hoe. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're fucking toxic. <laughs> you were talking about how, like... That's your belief, not you love me. It's just you believe that, like, if you love something, that, like, you know what I mean? I don't see it as, like, you saying, I love you this much. What do you think I'm talking about? I'm talking, I think you're talking about, like, the I, like the fantasy, like, the idea of love. No, I'm talking literally about you. Oh! <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know where I've been. <laughs> You've been over there being toxic. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute i don't feel it is the problem uh maybe so but that's how i that's what i that's think. what that's what your translation is i love you that's, this much that's what the realization of that that's is cute. what i think this last chapter of our relationship has been mm. defined by yeah um for sure i realized that like i realized that i'm gonna start crying i think um like what we were talking about before what like it it sounds kind of corny and cliche but that's what i i think god is love and love is something transcendent and and un understandable to Mm. us we can't fully comprehend it but it's the best thing ever and whatever you find that can connect you to that is worth everything. I guess we should. So that's what I'm trying to say is mm. like I've found you as my connection mm. to that. Mm. It's through you that that I see a connection to the divine, to whatever 
love really is mm. and what and whatever that is is it's worth everything it's more valuable than anything mm. so how so how how should i view or treat or have a relationship with whatever that is that connects me to that mm-hmm. that's the most important thing in the world mm. whatever connects you to that And then how do you define your love with, like, children? Because that's, like, a whole nother different Well, you connect love. me to that. Yes. Through, through, through that love, you're connected to that. And then you have... See, so there's something... That's something... Everyone wants to talk about, like, oh, I'm anti-woman or some shit. Okay? But this is really how I feel. Women are the way that we connect to divine love transcendent love Mm. the most important thing that all existence is a part of not only that like you're the portal that connects that world to this world and enters in a new soul from that dimension into this dimension Mm. that's what your body is that's what your body is doing right now Mm. That's like, why so... does that, how could you even understand what that means? Right. How could you ever contemplate the value of that? It's something that's so And imagine if sacred. that ever goes away. Like, they can just, like, make babies in Petri dishes. And... It's going away. It will. Yeah. It's going to happen. Unless there's some kind of, so like, apocalypse what? thing that halts all of technological progress and takes us back to the Stone Age, that is where we're headed. It's going to be some Brave New World type of shit. Mm-hmm. And on that note, we have a couple voice memos. I hope they're not completely cussing us out. I don't know. I don't know. Shall we? Uh, let me read this poem real quick since we just uh, Yeah, you just confessed from your the, love to me. <laughs> yeah, the subject of love. So uh, this is a poem by Rumi. Um, and of course it's the English translation, so it doesn't like necessarily have a a rhyme or a meter to it, Mm. but it's still so powerful that it's worth it. Um, it says, love shows itself in the way the heart weeps for no ailment is like the suffering of the heart, which is why all love, whether of this world or the next leads us in the end to the palace of the king. I talk and talk to describe and demystify love. Then I come to know what a poor job I've done. As my pen ran faster and faster to write, it reached the word love and broke down. That last line, super um, um, popular. I've heard that. Before. That's just because I put it on a, on a subtitle of your Instagram picture. You did? I did. When? Which picture? My most popular picture I've, that I ever posted that is a oh, picture Oh, is that of what it, where I read it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that, That's funny. That illustrates no, I've read the, that before the, the so way much. that you can't comprehend what love is. Mm. The connection that that is to God, because it says it takes you to the palace of the king. And suffering that's connected to that, which is that sadness that I'm saying is the best, the like most strongest feeling. Right? Like there's a sadness that love brings Mm -hmm. you and that suffering that the sadness of love brings you leads you to god Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. facts thank you rumi salute okay and here we go we have two voice memos no we have two voice messages okay first one's from Jeannie. hi i just want to say um Y'all are legit. The only people I can watch talk about absolutely nothing and be entertained. You guys are so funny. Um, Also, my question would be, has COVID affected you for the better or worse? Or has it affected you guys at all? And how do you see yourselves in the future? Love you guys. Bye. Okay, first of all, I'm offended that you say we talk about nothing. No, Asif, you are such a dick. (laughs) <laughs> Shout out to Jeannie. I love you. I wonder if you're Azhar on, like, is that your screen name on YouTube? I don't know, because she commented kind of a, something similar. Oh, yeah. But if that's her. Hey, girl. Um, and if it's not, hey, Jeannie. Um, 
thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to the podcast, your presence and attention. And it was, means so much. Um, I think that's a super COVID. good question because I haven't, that's the first time I've ever heard anyone ask like what the positive would be or if it's positive. Did, was that, I guess I missed that part. She was like, has, has COVID affected you negatively or positively? Oh, okay. So positively? I've never heard it framed positively before. I think it affected me slightly positively because I think I was wo- awaken to like the bullshit that goes on mm. in like how media and fear mongering works. Mm-hmm. So I've always been like semi like conspiracy, like guessing if that makes sense to how that shit works. Yeah. But this was a blatant like in this whoa like made me realize, damn, that shit's not like a conspiracy anymore. It's real. That shit's real and question everything. Yeah. Type deal. Yeah, I, it's it's crazy because I was kind of having that realization maybe a year or two ago because, like, I grew up listening to NPR and there was, a, there was always this kind of idea that, like, uh, staying up to date with news is some kind of moral imperative. Hmm. Like, that's your responsibility as a good person and a well-informed citizen or whatever to know what's happening in the world. And I just realized, oh, that's just a marketing ploy. That's just like a super effective marketing gimmick to dupe people into thinking like buying buying our product is your moral responsibility. That's a great marketing tactic and it's super effective. But what happened after that was I realized that the news is fear slash outrage porn mm. that's what it is yeah 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 it's like, wh- wh- when is what it can ever- i plug into today to know what to be afraid of to mm-hmm. know what to be angry about to be to know what to have anxiety and stress about let me just plug in and they'll tell me mm-hmm. and while i'm doing that i can feel righteous about it and i can feel better than other people because because i'm upset because i actually care about the important things and you don't even care right yeah huh you know so there's there's and a lot of that like i said i don't think it's necessarily that they have evil intentions or that they're like on some kind of thing i think they very well may but a lot of what's going on it has nothing else going on except for the fact of like how the market is directing things. Mm. They're just trying to sell advertising. Mm. And they're just trying to figure out what how, what gets eyeballs here. What gets clicks here. Whatever that is, that's what we need to do because we're struggling to survive. So we don't have the time for, you know, what journalism used to be and research and fact checking and all that. We need something that's going to piss people off and make people outraged. And that's what's going to get us clicks and views. And so there's this vicious cycle of propagating bullshit instead of realness. Hmm. And I think a lot of people have come to the... I think a lot of people have realized that from this. Really? From this? I don't think so. From COVID. I think so. Like, I don't know. Obviously, the media is not going to tell you that. Right, but I don't... Because that's against their own cause for us to know that. But I think a lot of people are not just following with the bullshit as much as the media wants to tell you. Uh... I don't know. That's hard to say. That's what I think. Yeah. It's it is hard to say because you just rely on the media for your uh information on whatever's going on, you mm-hmm. know? So they're going to they're going to put out what's beneficial to them because ultimately they're a giant big corporate conglomerate co- company. They don't care about you. They mm-hmm. don't care about anything. They care about money. Um Next so did you answer message? it? 
uh, like if it was negative or positive. Or any, yeah, I feel like. <laughs> I don't know. It made me really think that it actually could, there actually yeah. could be like a civil war and a collapse of our society. A collapse. I think that's what it made me think, realize, like, yo. Like, everything could legit we, fall apart yeah. and we descend into violent chaos. How, that There was really such a shortage happen. in, like, food and stuff. Like, that's and not too far. And I think it still far. can happen. No, yeah, I think it will. I think it will again. Like, when the election time comes around, something, something's about to go down. Well, the thing is, like, we're still, like, what, two months away from election? Yeah. It's going to only continue to ramp up until that. Yeah, it's so scary. It's going to get all worse be and crazier to each other all the way up till there. Conquers all. <laughs> so that that doesn't happen. Cuz uh Yeah, it's going to I think it's going to be crazy. Did you see that there was an aluminum shortage? No. There was like aluminum? Aluminum. Aluminum. Shortage. That's how like a Moroccan would say it. That's what British people say, aluminum. Um shortage when they were um what was it It was like dr pepper like posted about it like they're struggling to like they don't have cans yeah and so then i was listening to jalal's podcast and he made a really good point he's like if there's an aluminum shortage what about canned food is canned food made out of aluminum canned cans but is it aluminum i, think I don't it think it's be. aluminum it's not I think it might be. I don't know. I'm not <gasps> smart enough to know. And I was like, <gasps> "Oh, buy your canned food while you can." Can you imagine if there's a shortage on canned food, and then some shit goes down, and there, then there's a real because sh- we saw how quickly there was a food shortage. Right. Like how bread was just like. Yeah. Rice. Remember when rice and pasta were impossible to find? Yeah, it could happen again. Mm. and it could happen for a longer time yeah and that's the scary shit like if it lasts like for a while long? if they if the shelves don't get restocked for a week or two for a month can Anyways. you imagine what it's like after a month you're gonna wish you bought some guns what <laughs> you're gonna wish you bought some guns because people are that's gonna be inciting killing each violence other. sir no i'm saying people you it can't doesn't say t- that on youtube i don't of think. course you can no, you can't. There, you can look it up. It's actually like a statistic of like yeah. how many meals you have to be removed for society to collapse into chaos. Yeah, but you chaos. can't. I don't think. I think we're. That's an instant demonetization. No, I don't think comment. so. You just. I made, don't think so. Better Everyone, not be, sir. If everyone's starving to death, there's gonna be people willing to kill other people to feed their families. Okay, on to the. That's next. what I'm saying. Hi guys. So my question is. What are your views on jealousy between the spouses? Like right now, my dream is to make a YouTube channel, but my husband is dead set against it. He literally goes psychotic when I even bring it up. But it's my passion. Like actually my passion. So maybe if you guys role played, like if... Asif was against Nura doing YouTube. Nura, would you listen to Asif if it was like a dead set no? Or would you just be like, screw you, you should support me because I really want to do this. Like, I would support you in anything, any one of your dreams. So what are your views on that? Girl. Hey, Boshi. That's first a of good all, question. Shout outs to Boshi. She was on our live today. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, point number one. Do start a YouTube channel. Anyone you could just can do, do what Nura did. Keep it a secret until you're popping. A. That's like one of my advices. Also, low key, fuck what your husband says. Wow. <laughs> just kidding. I think I, my biggest question is like, why is he so against it? Is he because yeah. like, you gotta know that, why. those traditional values of like I don't want my wife out there for the world or whatever like is that his reasoning behind it because if that is like it's pat we're past that point I don't know we you are gotta so you gotta try that. to understand the other side though to know what the reasons are and where they're coming from and it, if at the end of the day you're not able to see eye to eye I say think about flipping it around. Like when you say, mm. this is my dream and he, you should support me. 
think about would you really support him and his dreams no matter what they are? What if his dream was something that you specifically hate? Mm. Like put whatever that is. Like, like if, you're, if, you if you're jealous strip club, and his dream is to know. have three other wives. <laughs> okay. Are you going to say no to that or are you going to support his dream? And then you you have your answer. I don't answer know. I feel like those were really it. two extremes. I was like, I'm or saying, strip club. No. If that's a dream and the other party doesn't like it, what I do mean, you do? I feel like you should build a case. Like, show him all the positives, you know? Like, he probably just has this view of what. Yeah, that's people true. It that depends start, on what his like, objection is, he, you know? Yeah. Because a lot of people think it's like a very negative. Uh, uh, like influence mm-hmm. on specifically like Muslim women and stuff, and I think that comes from a misunderstanding of That's what's actually biggest, happening. That in the is real the world. biggest misunderstanding right now. Is like influencers get fame and they take their job off. Go for yourself. Yeah, I mean, like not- I'm so over that narrative. But it's just, that's the narrative of people that have spend their entire life it's not in the mosque true. and not in the real world. And they ha- and their kids are living in the real world. Mm-hmm. And so if you're just bubbled off like that... Shout out to all the bubbled off you're bitches. You're not going to be in Can touch with what's actually me? happening. I don't want any bubbled bitches following me. <laughs> 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 Goodbye! Just kidding. Um, but I'm not. So, Boshi, let me know. I'll help you out. Hopefully we can... Convince hubby. Where was she? What kind of act was she? Did it she sounded have a British like accent? she had a British accent at first. A little first. bit, yeah. A little bit it did. So, Boshi, I'm rooting for you. She's Let us probably know half British. what the, his objections are. When we get, we'll figure this out together. Yeah. Um, as always, thank you so much for sending, for Asif would call it calling in, even though you're not calling in. Before I'm pretty sure she called re- Recording a voice memo. Taking the time, because those are super fun. And we really appreciate it. The link will be down below if you're interested in sending one in. Um, don't forget to follow us. On, I, need to do a, I need to do a giveaway next podcast, by the way. Really? We're doing a giveaway? I want to do a giveaway, even if it's just like a box of makeup or something. What if it's a guy that wins the giveaway? There aren't any guys that watch this. We should and if pick you the are, two guys, show yourself. We should pick the two guys that actually listen and they do deserve a prize. Are you going to send them a box of cigars or some shit? No, I'm going to send them makeup. Cool. Give it to some chick that you think we'll is pretty. We'll send you some manjure. No. You get makeup <laughs> and give it to some pretty girl. What? Oh. Or your wife. He can give it to some pretty girl? Yeah. That's kind of a good trade-off. Right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Or we can send you a coffee gift card. Or maybe a bag of coffee. I don't know. What do you send, guys? Manjure. I mean, as a... I, f- I don't know. Anyways. I feel like... Yeah, what would you want to win? In- Has Joe Rogan ever done a giveaway? I don't think so. Not that I've ever heard of. Joe, get it together. He doesn't need to buy shit. He doesn't need to buy audience. That's rude. That's rude. You should be doing giveaways, Joe. Why? You've got he the... He doesn't f- need to buy his audience. He doesn't... He it's people. not about buying people. What is it about? Even if we don't announce it in a title or something, it's just a nice gesture of giving back and showing your appreciation. Oh. His, he thinks no, his appreciation is just him producing content. That's how I feel, too. <laughs> I feel okay, like if we're doing then this giveaway, is why men are canceled. If we're doing a giveaway, it's just to buy an audience. No, I'm, I'm not okay buying an Let audience. Everyone subscribe. We'll pay one no. of you guys something. No. And you're welcome for our great service to you. Man, this podcast probably is going to sound really... Have you been knocking against audio. this whole time? <laughs> yeah. I hate you. <laughs> and I scream into the mic. Don't yeah. you love it? When you scream, you got to get farther away. Don't, Don't you love it? Why would you do that? Get farther away when you scream. No, I like the shock factor. No, that's that's not good. So it's been real. Also, we got to get back. We forgot about our Patreon once- account. Yeah, we, we did. No, well, we do have to do that. But we forgot about our once a podcast joke. No, so fuck we're, your jokes, We're doing awesome. that again there's starting re- next week. There's a reason we, fr- we let that. <laughs> there's a reason that died. That's so rude. <laughs> You don't like jokes? You know what I should do? There's so many good makeup sales going on this weekend. I should buy, like, some hot shit items and, like, we give it away next week. That's what I should do. Kylie Lipkits. 
Yeah. I don't get one free right now. Okay. Who wants Kylie Lip Kit? Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> uh, okay, bye. Uh, Do you have something else no, you want to say? No, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe. Please like the video. And rate us on iTunes or comment. Comment on iTunes. Leave a comment on iTunes. Follow us on Spotify. Subscribe. Fo- subscribe on, on YouTube. Apple subscribe on YouTube, and you gotta yeah. press the little bell thing. Share, even if you hate us. <laughs> Layla would be. This is how Layla talks. Layla, we need Layla to come in here and be like, Ooh, "Yeah, okay, you should, y'all." Just to end it, you should see how she walks away when she's go- when she's like in trouble. She walks away like this, like her hands out like this. She gets this. all ghetto. Literally, and like so much sass in her walk, and she's holding her hand like this, walking up to go to the stairs to go to her room. <laughs> Funniest shit ever. Mm-hmm. Yep. Dude, we almost did two hours. Oh. Damn. Sucks to edit. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.